Welcome back everyone. We're back again doing something a little bit different today, uh, doing a top 10 list. Um, probably should have waited for this for the end of the year, but I decided this is a good point to do it. Um, all the anime that I've watched up to this point and the ones I'm probably going to continue watching is I can gauge it at a good point to where it is. So basically this is a top 10 list of my favorite anime through 2019. First of all, I broke it already by saying top 10. There's technically 12 and one of them isn't even an anime. Um, obviously this is my opinion and stuff, and so there's some anime that you guys might be going like, what the fuck, this should not belong on the top 10 list, or where the fuck is this? These are just some of the animes I've watched. There's a few that I missed that I thought wouldn't even come into anyone's top 10s. They were just fucking terrible. Um, but yeah, so this is my list. Uh, we have five categories. Top tier, really good, pretty good, okay, and meh. Which is ironic for a top 10 list, but still, whatever. So... Starting starting us off, I have uh, Attack on Titan Season 2 Part 3. I'm undecided whether or not to put this in pretty good or really good. In comparison, this Season 3 Part 1 was actually really good, and it progressed the story along really nicely, which was a good pace. Uh, the anime was really good. It tying a lot of knots together. There was a lot of mysteries involved in the first previous three seasons, which finally got answered, and then we could progress the story to going into a new direction, which kind of just is eye-opening in, in a sense. It was really good. Uh, really enjoyable and just for me it was really good it wasn't top tier it wasn't below par it was just kind of in between but at a good level then next we have Boruto which is going straight into meh the only reason it made it to my top 10 list is because in the current arc which I don't even know if it's canon I'm pretty sure it's not I'm pretty sure it's still filler which is not surprising because the studio goddamn Periot who sent out Naruto in I think it was a 2015 with eight canon episodes over the course of a fucking year but still I'm pretty sure all of Barto up to this point is filler, bar the um, tuning exam. I think that is canon to an extent. There's some characters in there that aren't and whatnot, but still fucking bonkers. But at the moment, the anime is an interesting point where Naruto and or Naruto Boruto and Sasuke have gone back through time because one of the Atsuki, Atsuki guys, those white guys with the white hair, that fucking red weapons, has gone back in time to try to extract Naruto's chakra as a child. And going through that kind of uh, scenario, uh, it looks at the moment that Naruto and Boruto are training together under uh, Jiraiya, and uh, Jira this Jiraiya section is possibly link linking to the, um, I can't remember his ma your man's name in the manga, he has a mask and he looks kind of like Jiraiya, so it could be like a future protege of Jiraiya's who kind of involves and makes a time warp into the, into the series, which is fucking going all over the place, but... It's still pretty decent. Anima the animation is quality is good. Voice acting is still good. Storyline is fucking shit. But um, meh, what can you do? Next up, we have uh, My Hero Aka. Um, normally, I would put this top tier, but since we were only a few episodes in, and one thing I will um, admit, one of my friends mentioned it to me, that uh, he found that My Hero is quite slow, and um, it's all about building drama. I quite enjoy it. Um... But I would normally put this top tier. It's still really early days, so it's hard to gauge whether or not it's going to be good. I think we're going to have, like, it's a lot of character build-up as per usual. Maybe the 25 episodes or so. Build up all our characters, get them to that uh, focal point, and then let everything just explode and uh, and come to, like, an amazing ending. Or at least to a, a f amazing s s summary of sorts. Uh, so it's looking really good at the moment. It's hard to gauge where it's going. Obviously, you have some drawbacks and some really good stuff, but I don't know. Some people say good, some say people say bad. I think it's top tier, but just for, like to be a kind of a fair vantage point, I'm going to put it really good. Uh, next, we have uh, Reincarnation. I Reincarnated as a Slime. Uh, this anime was actually pretty decent. Um, it's one of those isekais, but it's a bit different of sorts. It plays... It's really good. Uh, it's nice to watch. It's a bit fanfare-y, and sometimes the story's a bit, a bit lackluster because sometimes things can be going on and then they resolve it in an episode and other things they focus on for fucking ages that they could have done in one episode that took maybe five or six. But uh, yeah, it was. it's a good anime. It's, it's pretty good to watch. It's not my top of my list. It's not the bottom of my list. It's in there. It wouldn't, obviously, it wouldn't be my top ten overall anime favorites. It's probably in like maybe the 50 to 100, but it's pretty good. Next we have uh, Demon Slayer, which for me is just goes top tier. Absolutely amazing anime. Uh, I'm not a fan of CGI animation. 
normally. Um, I forget the studio who made Demon Slayer, but they blended uh, hand-drawn anime with computer-generated anime seamlessly. Like, there were some scenes, like, you could kind of tell, but, like, unless you were actually specifically looking at the scene, like, in, like, like just analyzing it out your fucking ass, you wouldn't be able to tell. And then if you're just like, oh, wait a second, this is actually CGI. Like, there's one scene where Tanjiro was walking down a street, and he was all CGI. And I only realized at the end of the scene when um, it was just the background was moving behind him, which is really good because sometimes CGI can look kind of shit. But apparently this studio, I can't re remember the name of them off the top of my head, blends the two elements really well. And they absolutely did to a T. The animation was on point. Story was excellent. Uh, unfortunately, it only got 25-ish episodes, 26. Uh, I could have done one more. But they've already announced they're breaking a movie. I think it's coming out in February. March, somewhere like that. Maybe April, I can't remember. I still remember watching the uh, trailer for it. It was really good. But yeah, top tier for me. One of the best animes of 2019. And actually probably be my like top 20 overall of all anime ever. Uh, for now, now for my next one. Ironically, not really an anime. Well, technically like an anime series. We have Dragon Ball Super Broly. I'm going to put this into pretty good. It was a new Dragon Ball movie, but it's actually canon for once. And it was really good, surprisingly, because some, most of the time the Dragon Ball movies are kind of blah. Uh, this was interesting. They took a really interesting element where, like, Broly was an interesting character to begin with. And uh, Studio, what was it, TV to Toyo Tokyo? I can't remember the name of the studio, who makes Dragon Ball. Uh, finally did the smart thing where they just swapped. Like, Broly, in a sense, is a really good character, but they kind of fucked him up in, Z in DBZ because they made... Um, the focus of Broly's anger on Goku, when really it should have been on Vegeta, and they corrected that, and the character makes so much more sense. He's obviously powerful out the fucking Mazu, but uh, yeah, it plays really well. The fighting was really good, the scenes were excellent. The, then they introduced a new animation style, which was badly needed for a while because Super was an absolute fucking mess. Sometimes you got some top tier episodes, and then the next week they were goddamn awful. It was kind of reminiscent of, um, if you guys ever watched Grimm, uh, Grimm was an interesting TV show where basically you could tell when they had the budget or they used their budget in the episodes. Like sometimes they'd be like movie quality episodes in terms of CGI and special effects. And then other episodes, they'd be like, like garbage, sci-fi, terrible movies. Like the CGI would just be like, I don't know, getting some, some Photoshop image of, a. Uh, I don't know, of a cat or a werewolf and putting it on a person. It looks all really blurry and distorted. In the next episode, it's like top tier, uh, like a dragon guy with breathing fire and looks amazing and seamless. Like, it was so, like, mishmash that you can never expect, you never know what you're expecting. And that was a similar kind of a scenario with um, Dragon Ball Super, at least for the anime, that uh, it was so up and down. You never knew what you're going to get. Sometimes you get, like, top tier amazing episodes. Sometimes you get absolute garbage, like the early ones for uh, Super, especially when Super Saiyan 3, Goku versus fucking Beerus, that was some trash, trash, trash ass anime. Um, then we have, next in my list, I have uh, Dan Maki. Dan Maki Season 2, is it, is it okay to pick up girls in a dungeon? Uh, Dan Maki Season 1 was actually really good. Season 2 is okay, the, it starts off really well. And it starts going down a, story, uh, a path that's kind of interesting, but it falls away. And, I don't know, it it feels like it jumped... I was, I was talking to my friend about this. The I believe it was the last episode where, basically, the... I forget, uh, Bell falls into a river with um, Hestia. And then the next episode, they wake up in a village. And I was talking to my friend about it, and he was asking, did he miss an episode? And I was like, no, he didn't. Like, it just basically skipped over an entire episode they could have put out. But no, like, it just skipped so much content. And apparently they skipped a lot of um, battle scenes and stuff from the manga and the light novels. So I thought it was okay. It's not, it wasn't amazing. Season one was actually really good. And the follow-up um, season that follows uh, Wallenstein's uh, journey, that one's actually pretty decent. Season two for this, I thought was pretty pretty lackluster it's okay you get to see the characters see them progress a bit more see them get some powers and whatnot and see bell progress but um the story's not really there and i don't know it was okay that's much as i can say uh then we have one punch man season two 
One Punch Man suffered for, or season one suffered, suffered from, it was amazing, don't get me wrong, absolutely amazing, but it suffered from a case of not being overhyped, but it was back to the moon and back. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case for season two. Season two, I think they had six months or something to put out the episodes. Uh, you could tell, like, sometimes it was similar with, like, Super. Sometimes it'd have really good animated sections, and other times it'd be god-awful. Like, Genos and anyone who was metallic looked like they can't, was fucking made out of aluminum. Like, they're god-awful. God, god-awful. Like, I don't know how to describe it. Basically, like, they could have got by if they just drew Genos' thing and made him just a little bit shiny. Kind of like how they do with the armor for Dragon Ball Super characters. Like, you can see in Broly here. Some of the shoulder pads are a little bit shiny, so they give it like that metallic look. But no, with Genos, they like it was as if they got like this um, whitewash of a metal color, and they just did his armor. So he he was just basically a floating head and floating arms, and then you saw this torso bit that moved around. It looks so gaudy and awful. So whenever you had a character who had like metallic stuff, it just ruined the scene for me. Uh, and also they did a lot of cutaway things like they do in TV shows because in anime, obviously, like there's a lot more combat and. And stuff where like sometimes uh saitama would go in for a punch and then it would just like parry away from what he like they show that he went for the punch and then kind of go to the opposite direction of the shot and just see the aftermath rather than seeing the entire fluid motion which is what they do in normal tv because normal tv obviously they can't explode people like the budget would be ridiculous but obviously you can in anime because it's drawn so obviously it's still gonna take a bit of time to do but it's not as impractical as to do it like with live tv um, but I don't know. It's okay. It wasn't amazing. Storyline was actually there. The voice acting was there. Animation kind of let it down, but the characters are really good. So that that's it has its merits. If it didn't have the characters, it would be in a mad category. Uh, but obviously the characters there. This is one of the few shows where you go and watching One Punch Man, but the show is not about One Punch Man. It's about all the proliferary characters, and then Saitama comes in at the end sometimes and does stuff. And he's, I think there were some episodes he was in there for like two or three minutes. Or he's just in around the scenes. Um, and next up we have uh, Dr. Stone. Dr. Stone is actually a really good anime. I've been enjoying it a lot. I did, I thought, at first, I didn't think it was going to be that good. Because it usually wouldn't be one of the animes that would fall into my kind of scope. I'm more of like an Isekai kind of person, if you couldn't tell by this, uh, uh, this list so far. Uh, but yeah, Do Dr. Stone is kind of interesting. It's kind of like an isekai, but it's not at the same time because we're in isekai, you get transported to a different world. But in this case, the, the the hook is that everyone was frozen in stone and eventually people uh, were broken out of it. It was really cool. The, the elements of the show are really smart. They're following along actual science. I, it's a bit exaggerated at times uh, how they're doing stuff, but still really cool all the same. Um, the characters are really interesting, how they progress, the animation's top quality, story's really good. So everything that, like, all the elements you want are in there. I find sometimes with these kind of animes, like, things are over-sexualized. Som sometimes this, it kind of is, but it's to a tasteful standpoint. So, like, if you are getting some, if you get, like, a female f uh, fanfare, you're get also getting male fanfare. So it kind of balances out, so it's not so, like... So much in your face where like with fairy tale like it's just everyone is fucking tits galore and everyone's shredded with this it's kind of done subtly i say subtly it's still in your face but not to the same extent um it's really enjoyable the characters are really well done everyone's well thought out top tier anime or not well not top tier just below top tier really good uh next up which is the one that's going into top tier is rising of the shield hero definitely in my top 10 favorite anime of all time now like it's so good the characters are so well done the storyline is amazing characters are so well uh, fleshed out both the main characters the the backups the antagonists everyone that you want in it are all well done um anime is really good the storyline is excellent it's one of the few animes that have actually gone out after watching it to progress in the uh light novels uh, i was going to do manga and then i realized those from reading reviews and stuff, manga was, the manga was actually one of the few that was actually the shortcoming. Uh, nor, in most cases, the manga is better than the anime, but in this case, the anime is better than the manga, and the light novels are better than the anime. So it was actually an interesting adaptation of sorts. Going back and reading it, there's some changes that they made, but obviously works well for the storyline. It's so good. It's well worth a watch. It's a bit dark, 
that's one thing I will admit. It's very dark in terms of the storylines that they go through, but it is well worth it. Next up, we have uh, Seven Deadly Sins. This one, uh, maybe I would have put into really good for previous seasons, but this one is kind of a letdown. The animation quality has dropped slightly, um, but where they're going with the characters wise at the moment, at this, at this current arc, I think we're on episode six at the moment. Um, it's going through a different kind of uh, viewscape of what they would normally do. And I'm actually really enjoying it. Sometimes I find it's kind of like in your face, like slapstick um, action and just combat the whole time. Sometimes there's some character development and a bit here and there. But this time it's actually really good. One thing that's annoying me is that they've decided to go for the remove blood, but they just painted it white. Obviously, it's not as bad as when they did it with um, Tokyo Ghouls, the second season, where like they just blurred out the entire image and just made everything so difficult to see. I think like you can't really do it to an anime that's catered to a, a mature audience. Like obviously, it's it's probably about twelve to fifteen plus. But at that point, like I don't think they have to gore or ungore it. Like it's it's made that way. If you want to market it at a uh, older age group go with that but it's not like sometimes you're stabbing p into people and like 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 literally there's people been ripped to shreds in previous seasons so i don't know why they're trying to drop it down to more a less violent option making it white and kind of look like semen i guess uh, makes it i think a little bit more in your face which is kind of ironic because they want to not make it as gory and I think by adding in the white effects for blood makes it more gory because it makes it pop and stand out more than the actual blood would and it contrasts really well against the um the purple uh the purple essence of demons like the demons have these like purple wings or purple arms that kind of extend and give them additional power like if they get the arms cut off they can use their power to reattach them but when they get cut off like they get this white goo that comes out of them and then when they reattach, like, the the demon's power, it's kind of like a purpley black. So the white contrast, like, really well. So it's like, oh, yeah, that guy got his arm chopped off, so that's his blood. Well, before, it would be a dark red that can almost blend into the, the black. So you could say, oh, that's just his arm coming off and just reattaching now. But now you can tell, oh, yeah, no, that guy's bleeding. That white shit, whatever it is. And it looks fucking disgusting. Um, it's good. It's pretty good. Story's there. It's a bit annoying, obviously, with the blood. Um, the animation's it's fallen a little bit it's not as seamless as it was in previous seasons where it was very fluid this time it's a little bit more rigid it's kind of um kind of like dragon ball super in the um tournament of power of arc where it is fluid to an extent but it's a little bit rigid if you get what i mean like some people are like just constantly standing still and there's a bit of movement going on but everything seems very very heavy movement and there's not a lot of like free flow where previous seasons like it almost felt like the camera was moving along and you'd see all the characters moving well this one is like to that extent it's a weird i don't know how to describe it but it feels sluggish a little bit slow it's okay but i don't know it's a weird one uh my next top tier which is going to piss off a lot of people is black clover black clover i think is actually a pr is actually an underrated anime it's, the characters are really well done. Obviously at the beginning of the series, Asta and some of the characters were very loud and in your face, but that was more so down to a creative direction of the voice actors, of them having to try to figure out where the character was coming from, where basically in the anime, or not the ma anime, the manga, Asta's character shouts a lot, but like he's doing a lot of like swings and stuff, so they thought he screamed a lot or yelled. Which he kind of does still, but not to the extent of the first, was it, 9, 10 episodes, where he was very, like, yeah, like, every 5, 10 seconds just screaming about something. Um, but yeah, the storyline in this has actually been really good. Voice acting's been top. The animation has been decent. My main problem with Black Clover, or it's not really Black Clover's fault, it's Studio Period, because Studio Period also makes, Bor or, uh, makes Boruto and makes Black Clover as a... Um, bi-week or is it bi-weekly weekly series bi-weekly is every other week um but yeah so it's a weekly series and unfortunately black clover suffers from boruto because like if boruto was released now and there's no naruto boruto would have been cancelled ages ago but the fact that boruto is this is a spin-off of the naruto series it obviously gets a bit more attention 
But Black Clover in its own right is actually really interesting. Uh, the story's there, the characters are there, all the kind of um, like we have the Black Clover, the Black Bulls, and all of the kind of characters in the group, all the peripheral characters, and then all the other characters in the different um, uh, wizard guilds. Is it wizard guilds? Uh, Magic Knight squads uh, are all interesting and they're kind of fleshed out to an extent. Um, and that's the only thing that's letting it down is the animation. Like, if it was had a slightly better animation, the same level as what Naruto had, I know some people say, oh, Naruto didn't have amazing animation, but it was very consistent and the fight scenes were very consistent, bar like your pain fights and stuff like that. But other than that, like, it was a consistent anime the entire way through. That's where uh, Black Clover suffers, where sometimes it's a bit more rigid than you'd want and if it was a bit more free-flowing and if the animators had a bit more time and a bit more resources they could make it a hell of a lot better but that for me is why it's top tier because it's already there but it could go to the next level or even be higher than what it currently is which is like super top tier if it had that little bit more of a push and the arc where it is at the moment we're in a hell of a, a sequence with the elves and everything Every single episode is like kick-ass. All the characters are getting major uh, progression. And we're learning so much more about them. And more and more stuff is just happening. It's amazing. And then for my final um, anime. Out of my list of top 10. Of, was this 13? Yeah, 13 or 14. Um, we have uh, Fire Force. Fire Force is an interesting one. I don't know whether to put in really good or pretty good. It has merits for both. But I think it has a few more detriments, and that's why I'm going to put into pretty good. I would not I would usually say put this into really good, but uh, story-wise, it was very slow. We're currently on like episode 15 or 16, and I feel like in the last three or four episodes, it's only feeling, start, like, feeling like it's finally starting to take off. Where like, sometimes with like Black Clover, it was, it took maybe two episodes, and they were there. Or the first episode, really. Uh, same with Dr. Stone, it took an episode or two just to like lay the groundwork and eventually get you into that um, the incline. So you're like, oh, I can't wait for next episode, next episode. Fire Force, you knew it was going to get good, but it took so long to eventually get there. And it has the budget, which is kind of annoying because they do a lot of um, wide shots or way shots. And they have characters talking and they uh, draw their bodies. But like you're directly looking at their faces from a distance, maybe 10, 15 feet away. But they don't draw their faces, they just draw their mouths and their mouths move. Which is really, I don't know, distracting and off-putting. Like you're watching the characters, they have eyes, and if you just move out of range slightly, you can't see them anymore, and you move back in and they're there. And it's really off-putting. Like, story-wise, it's finally getting there. Combat's really interesting. The um, the power system that they use is very intriguing, and in how they're leveling it out. Um, the concept of what the show is is actually quite interesting, where basically there are these monsters called infernals which are basically people that get consumed by fire and then become these fiery monsters and it's the job of the firefighters or the fire force and there's eight different uh stations that go about and deal with them and the character we're following at the moment is shinra who's the main protagonist and then him dealing with uh, fire force eight and them trying to solve the mystery of infernals and um human combustion and when they turn into those infernalized people it's really good. Combat's really good. Uh, we're getting somewhere now with the story, and it's kind of kicking off. Obviously, they had to do a lot of groundwork with the show, but at the same time, other shows had a similar amount of groundwork, but they did it over a quicker period. I don't know, maybe it was just the characters had to get used to them, and it was so in our faces, and it was very slow. And the fact that they, obviously, there, there was the, the, they had put out the first episode, I believe. It was the first episode or two. And then there was a terrible disaster in Japan where one of the studios was burnt down and where many people lost their lives. And the Fire Force studio decided that they'd uh, postpone the, that episode that week for um, in case they thought it'd be in bad blood to put out the show based off the fire. Um, everyone was kind of like, oh no, like obviously there's no correlation between the two, just uttered by the like, fire and fire. But like obviously there's no correlation. And I thought by them doing that, it kind of makes it about it. But at the same time, I suppose they have to, regardless for PR reasons. And then after a few episodes, they took about a three-week break, which is very strange. Um, and it was at a point where the story was really starting to progress, and then just was like stopped. So like 
any kind of like hype they were building up with people to go back and watch it kind of stopped so once like the show came back i think i watched like three episodes in a row which is good because if they built up and the character and the episodes were good but at the same time i could have easily just like i don't know i've waited this long for it i'm not going to go back so obviously you're like you're on a teetering point where just at the point where like it's about to get good they just pull you away so i don't know i think it was good but it has a lot of detriments to it such as as i said before when you when the camera goes away you no longer see their faces it's not as focused um there's a lot of characters that you're thrust into and then that's you're trying to remember and then they throw a lot of characters at you that you're supposed to remember at the moment we're in an interesting point where it's hard to tell where the story's going um it seems like we're gonna have a big massive showdown for episode 16 or 17 uh but yeah it looks good it's pretty good it's not really good it's not okay so it falls into that really good section but it could easily be lower if it had more detriments and obviously it could be higher if it had more uh positives but still uh but yeah this is my uh top 10 list of about how many hammocks we have here three six ten thirteen <laughs> thirteen anime and one is a movie so uh it's not too bad obviously there's some anime missing here that maybe like likes of your mob psycho and the that uh, viking one that came out on amazon prime i haven't watched either of those two series yet obviously i haven't watched mob psycho season one i really been meaning to get around to it but i felt like put making as an on honorable mention because i've heard great reviews about it and obviously jojo's bizarre adventure i've never got around to it i never really got into jojo's it's one of those ones i think it's like marmite is either you love it or you hate it i probably just need to watch more episodes and eventually love it but um i'm not sure on it but yeah those are just some honorable mentions for it for the top 10 but yeah this is my top 10 i think the only one that you could question maybe is my hero Akka, that could obviously be higher but i think at this point it's too early to say whether or not it's going to be top tier or really good at the moment it's really good but i, I think it'll go top tier but i think just for safety reasons we have to keep it really good but uh yeah uh thanks for watching hope you enjoyed please like and subscribe and i'll see you guys next time